Hi everybody, good morning, happy Monday. Um, I am really excited, I've been bursting at the seams all morning because um, I did set like an actual time today to do the live, so I've been kind of really excited to do this. Uh, and I gotta be honest, a little nervous, and I don't know why, but usually, like I said, when I, if I ever have any kind of like butterflies in my stomach, it's usually because this is something that uh, needs to happen and it's a direction that I need to go. So, that being said, uh, let's get right into it. Um, Obviously, with everything going on in the world lately, I mean, it's just, I don't know. If you ask me, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. But, um, you know, and of course, like a lot of the anti-gunners out there, they talk about, oh, this is a gun issue, this is a gun issue. No, it's not. This is like a degradation of society issue. Like, you know, people, are, I don't know, you know, I hate to say people are just losing their minds because that's such a an easy blanketed thing to say. But I do feel like there is a growing evil that is permeating um, a lot of folks out there and I'm not sure if it's always been there and we're just seeing it more or if it's just it's evolving and, and getting deeper and deeper and so I was thinking about all that over the weekend and you know I was uh, having an, a nice little um, text message chat with my friend Amy Robbins over at Alexo just to say thank you to her about you know inviting me on uh, last week to do the the Instagram takeover for Alexo Athletica and how that really inspired me and she gave me this beautiful message that really just spoke a lot of um, joy and optimism and um, inspiration into me and you know, I realize how important that is. And I think about that in the context of what's happening in the world, how much hate is happening in the world. Uh, and I feel like that's where we're slipping, perhaps. Um, so the scripture that I found today that I thought was so on point with everything going on is Hebrews 10, uh, 24 to 25. And it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another into love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And, I mean, my gosh, like, how important is that? I mean, you know, we're growing up as kids, we, we know what that's like to feel encouraged, to be um, inspired and told that we're good at something, and, you know, kind of given a pat on the back. We, we, we know that as children, we, we need that as children, and then somehow we, we become adults, and suddenly we forget how valuable and how important that is. And not only do we not feed it into ourselves, how do we not speak uh, and stir up all of those uh, love and good works within ourselves, but we, we have a tendency to not think about those around us and how, how easy it is to speak righteousness, to speak inspiration, to speak love, to speak empowerment and encouragement into others. And we, we have that ability. And a lot of times we don't take action on it. You know, something as simple as, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of of the habit that if I'm out about and I see, you know, someone, you know, see a woman maybe with a pair of shoes that I like or something that she's wearing, I'll compliment her. And it could be a total stranger. And it's amazing how instantaneously, wherever her mood was, it just shifts. And it's, there's like a real connection there, even if it's just for like a split second. And you, you're feeding into someone's, self-esteem you're feeding into their heart and into their soul and you're hopefully maybe in that one moment brightening their day and you know and I feel like okay so where does this start and I think oftentimes speaking those good words those good messages into others starts within our own home I mean it's definitely I think it's a domino and it's a ripple effect of where we need to spread it outward as much as we can but I also feel like within our own homes, sometimes we, we lose touch with how important that is. I mean, between, you know, spouses, couples, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, it's like how often, you know, I always like to tell women, you know, we have these great men in our lives and most of them, you know, they want to be providers, they work hard, maybe they work multiple jobs, you know, they don't, they may not talk about uh, what they, the insecurities that they may have the fears that they may have about not being enough, not being good enough, not providing enough for their families. Uh, and I think for women, you know, when I think about this passage, this Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, I think about how can we feed into the souls of the men in our lives? How can we give encouragement to let them know that we recognize all that they're doing for us? We recognize that they may have fears and that, you know, giving people the permission to try and fail uh, I think is so important, 
You know, so oftentimes, it, you know, people put these unrealistic expectations on ourselves. And, and I definitely think men, and a lot of times in our society, good men have that expectation of wanting to be, you know, 200% for those that they love. You know, we, we as sheepdogs, if we conceal carry, if we're somebody who, you know, defends the Second Amendment rights, we, we are so clear about what our objective is when we want to bring self-defense, when we want to defend our loved ones uh, in battle. But sometimes we forget how that begins with just the words that we speak. Um, and so I, I encourage women to, you know, take the time, even if it's just a, a quick text message, you know, to your spouse or to your, your boyfriend or whomever, your, your significant other, and, you know, breathe encouragement in them. Breathe love into the fact that you recognize all that they do for your family, all that they may struggle to to maintain and that they may have fears and that it's okay and that you support them. And and I do think that's important because, you know, women, we, we're very sensitive types and we love to be complimented and, you know, we... There's a lot of those emotional needs that we're, we're pretty uh, open about needing, but I think sometimes it's very hard. I mean, we look, we live in a society where women, you know, this whole movement of feminism has been hijacked by the left and it's become this very weird thing like we don't need men. I'm sorry, like I'm a woman and I love having a good man in my life. Like to me, that completes the the picture, that completes the 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 sort of the the world in which I think God really wanted and created for us. So I value a good man in my life. Uh, and, you know, I'm a really independent woman. And, and you know, and for a long time, it was really hard for me to just, you know, say to a man like, hey, I, you know, I, I need help or I need this or I need that. Because usually I was like, no, I'm going to do this on my own. And like, that was my own version of like, female empowerment. And now my version of female empowerment is what I can do, how I can breathe that sort of encouragement in others and especially in my significant other. So, you know, I think for women, it's, it's okay to, um, it's okay to not always have to be in charge and not always be in, uh, this sort of place of you're strong and independent and to really breathe some, uh, some encouragement into your, your spouses. And on the flip side for men, you know, I think, I, God bless you that you are so um, driven to be be productive, to be uh, providers, to be caring, to be sheepdog, to protect your your loved ones. And don't forget that you know sometimes a woman it's something very simple. She just she wants to know that she is significant to you as well. And I think a lot of times men they're more of action. So to a man. Uh, going out in the world and you know earning a paycheck and being able to put food on the table in his mind is very much like this is my sign that I love you and I care about you and I want to support you uh, and that's all wonderful and I think that's all very important. I also think that it's important for um, you to not forget the simplicity of again words and how powerful words can be and you know turning to your wife, turning to your girlfriend and you know, telling her how you you value her presence uh, in your life. I mean, she really is there to be the soft place for you to land. And a lot of times women, that kind of, it gets a little unnoticed because men are, you know, they're, again, more of action. So they think, oh, well, I, she should know. She she should absolutely know. I You know, I, I, I work hard. I put food on the table. I have a roof over the head. Um, you know, I'm there to physically protect her. Um, but also be mindful of her heart and, and feeding that into her heart. And you know, that's just within our own home. Um, and then we start to, like I said, trickle out to those around us and, you know, feeding into the friendships. I have some amazing female friends. That, and that, for me just to say that is remarkable because I grew up being bullied, especially by women, I have to say. And it really changed my opinion about having trust in female friendships. And it was it was kind of sad because, you know, I grew up having a lot of guy friends, which was, you know, great and fine. And I like, you know, men, like they say it how they mean it. And it's very clear cut. Um, but I think I missed out in the value of having real sisterhood where friendships with women. And as I've gotten older, I've, and I've gotten, I'll be honest, more into the, the two way community into this sort of different world that, um, is very much about, you know, kind of, building up each other, this camaraderie, this this common ground of, you know, protecting our constitutional rights. That group in particular has really taught me what it means to feed each other's soul, what it means to speak 
uh, righteousness into someone else. And so I'm really blessed in in the last you know couple years now to really develop a lot of wonderful female friendships. And I definitely encourage it to maybe other women out there who haven't really had a good experience with women. Um, keep keep open to it. Keep searching. Uh, I, I would say be as open and honest about who you are and hopefully eventually you will start to attract that that like-mindedness. Um, and it has been such a blessing to be surrounded by friends, female and, and men, that we can feed each other and we, we bolster each other up and we, we want the best for everybody and there is no competition. We live in a world that is so competitive. Um, trust me, like... <laughs> Uh, between you know the acting world and and you know in, in, even in the world of firearms sometimes too there there is a there is an undercurrent and I think it's human nature we 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 want we strive for things we we judge ourselves based on others and you know I think competition is a very easy slippery slope and that competition generates kind of this resentment it generates jealousy all these negative attributes that none of us really they're toxic uh, and so again I want to go back to. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, where this message is very clear. It is about speaking good into others. It's about encouraging others because, look, the world is quickly evolving around us and it is becoming, unfortunately, a place that is just a breeding ground for hatred and people taking action on hatred. And I think the only way for us to counteract that is to, or counteract that rather, is to really start to focus on how we can fuel others hearts, their souls, how we can feed into them, how we can speak the word of, of God, of positive things into them and to encourage them. Because I, I feel like the more we do that with each other, this army that we are establishing just by our, our community and our love for one another is the only thing that can fight against that kind of evil. I mean, it's whether it's, it's God above, it, there, the, our, our tools have to be more, in my opinion, than just the the firearms that we wear on our body or or in you know wherever or in, on the range or in our homes or wherever that might be, I think for us our power really comes from our words and what we can do with those words. So as you go into this Monday, I mean it's Monday. We none of us want to be at work today probably, and uh, <laughs> I would say please you know find a moment whether it's to your loved ones, it's to your friends, whomever, find an opportunity to fuel someone else's day, to feed them some encouragement, some joy, some love, um, just all the things that God puts into your heart today, feed it on to others. And I, I think you're going to be really surprised with uh, how quickly things will turn around in your own life. I, I noticed, and I'm sure most of you have experienced that when you, when you make yourself of service, it comes back to you tenfold. So um, again, I leave you with Hebrews 10, 24, 25, uh, and just, I'm going to read it one more time because I just think we need to hear it. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So I'm just going to leave you guys with that. I hope you guys have a blessed and happy Monday. Um, be well, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.